What's up, everybody? Ben Raza and Matt Gajewski here for Odd Chopper, and we are back talking more college basketball. We got a little two-week break from the NFL. The Super Bowl is upon us, but you know what? In the meantime, there is plenty of college hoops to break down, and we have three betting picks for you tonight. Matt, I know it's Monday. It's not the best slate, but still plenty of games to find edges for. For sure. Uh, college basketball is heating up. Yep. There are some pretty decent Power 5 games tonight some really good teams Baylor's in the slate Duke's on the slate and it's only going to get better from here yeah I mean no doubt we we want to keep an eye on these teams before March Madness there are opportunities in the betting market so if you are new to the channel if you're just stopping in welcome aboard and welcome to Odd Chopper if you want to support us just hit that like button and if you want all the videos from college hoops to the Super Bowl to the NBA and everything in between PGA where we have been hot shout out to Josh Engelman Hit that subscribe button, join the team. It is a great way to get started. But all right, Matt, people are here for the picks. We've got three of them. We're starting with the Duke Notre Dame game. Where are you going in that one? I like Duke against the spread here. It's a five point spread. You're dealing with a pretty wide gap in talent overall. Just looking at this Duke roster, roster with Bancaro and Mark Williams, it's going to be major mismatches in this game, really across the board. And then I think primarily inside is where you're going to see a big one. Mark Williams has developed into one of the better big men in the country. And this Duke offense right now, you can get is just a five point favorite. So that's a nice spread I like there. Overall, Notre Dame ranks 187th in interior defense. They rank 291st against the glass. Those are huge mismatches against a Duke team, which can crash boards and has a really strong back and front court, really. So I, I really see this as there being matchups across the board in favor of Duke. And if you want to break this down in terms of just raw efficiency and offense and defense, Duke is fifth in offensive efficiency. Notre Dame is 63rd. Duke is 39th in defensive efficiency. Notre Dame is 180th. And Duke does have an injury to Trevor Keels, but we know how they recruit and they're so deep across the board that I just see them inserting Jeremy Jeremy Roach into the lineup and some of these other players that can just step right in, whereas a team like Notre Dame doesn't have that depth. So it's the Blue Devils for me. I'll lay the five. Yeah, five's a good number out there. You definitely want to jump on that if you can still find it. They are out there. Um, it's just talent disparity. I I've seen Notre Dame quite a bit, but you mentioned Duke. They recruit at just a different level. They've got some advantages, particularly on the glass. Uh, ACC play, I think they go in and get that done. We've seen them go on the road and be just fine. I think they do it again here. Yeah, Notre Dame hasn't really played anybody good in the ACC no. yet. They beat up on a UNC team. And I mean, like, UNC didn't have Dawson Garcia, who's a pretty good role player. And they also turned the ball over 14 times in that game. So that's that's not something that would match the season high that they've had in turnovers again if, if Notre Dame was able to force that many against Duke, which I find to be a pretty unlikely yeah very unlikely yeah Notre Dame uh, win against Louisville on the road check the box score in that they shot like 65 percent from the field if they do that tonight they'll be fine but uh, I don't see that happening all right you, you went with a nice marquee game if you're looking for a game that you two teams you probably never heard of but one of them will be dancing in March I can almost guarantee it I'm going to take you to the Summit League for my favorite bet of the night <laughs> South Dakota State, I'm laying 16 and a half points on the road against North Dakota, the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. This is a team you want to keep an eye on, 19 and 4. They are one of the most high-octane offenses in the country. They've scored 80 or more points in 10 straight games. They just played this team two games ago, and they won by 35 points. Now, they're on the road tonight, but there's one key stat that I'm going to get to. I'm not going to waste a ton of time on this. South Dakota State is the number one three-point shooting team in the entire country at 44%. Better than Purdue, better than Davidson, better than Villanova, better than all those teams. The number one team in the country in three-point percentage. They are playing a team in North Dakota that is 353rd in opponent three-point percentage. They almost allow 40% to opponents from three. It is an advantage that South Dakota State is just going to absolutely dismantle. We already saw this once. They are the best team in this league. Hitting the road is not going to matter to them. They play extremely high tempo. This game, I think, goes into the 90s for them. The total is north of 160. 16 and a half points laying it is not that big a deal when you play that fast. I think they win by 20 plus. Once again, we just saw it. I'm going to call for a repeat. I'm going to lay the points with the Jackrabbits. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And I think the three-point percentage 
that you brought up is a key stat. And we saw this with a team like Oral Roberts in the tournament yeah. last year. And that was against Ohio State. But I mean, when you have these teams that can shoot lights out, it's just such a huge advantage. And that does add a little volatility when you can take them over a large sample and bet them throughout the year. It does make a lot of sense, especially when you're getting the value here. Yeah, again, it does add volatility. The thing I like about this team, though, they play so fast, it helps to smooth it. They're top 25 in tempo in the country per Kempom. This is a team that they take so many threes that you find their average quicker than a, a team that's like very slow. I'm going to bring up Liberty just for a second. They're a really good offense. They just play so slow that a couple bad bounces, it really impacts it. A team like this with this type of total, they would have to go really cold the entire game for it to make a major impact. So I'm going to say they absolutely steamroll tonight. Now, we've got Duke. We've got South Dakota State. Where are we going to close this very, very different Monday card? These are actually a couple pretty good teams out West that we might not know a lot about, but Colorado State's taking on Wyoming. And Colorado State's been one of the hottest teams this year that you might not know, but I think a team that's tournament bound and Wyoming, a team on the other side, they have three losses. So a couple of really good teams facing off in the Mountain West, but Colorado State right now is a one point favorite. But what I want to focus in on is the total here. It's at 146. Both of these teams are, they're two of the most efficient teams in the country on offense, scoring a lot of points, not through pace, but through sheer efficiency. And now we have these two Titans clashing against each other. They both are well below average in terms of pace. A team like Colorado State, you have them at 68.6 possessions per game. Wyoming's at 69. And just for reference, the league average is about 71. So you're giving up two possessions on both sides of the ball here. For Colorado State, we also have injuries to monitor. Two premier players are hurt for this team. Adam Thistlewood, he hasn't played in many games. And then John Tondry is gutting it out through a meniscus tear. He played 19 minutes in their last game, went scoreless. I don't know what to really think of him, but he's a good score for this team. So his injury is key overall. And then on the Wyoming side, you try to break these two teams down. They do score a lot of points, but a lot of it came in non-conference or teams playing very fast paces against them. Since they both started conference play, their point totals have dropped. And I think that is key to focus on here when you can get under 146, which is the number I like. It's an interesting game. If you're a college basketball fan, I would really suggest checking out Colorado State in particular. They're a team that right now looks like a serious threat to maybe make some noise. You mentioned Wyoming. They just played such a soft non-con. I do think some of their, their stats are kind of inflated, and now we're seeing them. And, and they're a decent team, there's no doubt, and they're in altitude tonight. It's a competitive game. I'm with you, though. I'm going to lean under. This is one I, I really didn't have on my radar, but the more you know, you told me about it and the more I dug in, just a couple things, and I'll just add a couple secondary stats. One of the ways that Colorado State really takes advantage is they live at the line. They shoot almost 80% at the free throw line. That's top 10 in the country. But Wyoming does a really good job of not fouling. They're top 100 in, in fouls per game. They really don't let teams get into the double bonus that frequently. Things like that make a difference with a total. You know, if both teams are in the double bonus with eight minutes to go in the half, there's a lot of cheap fouls, a lot of easy conversions. I don't think we see that today. You mentioned the efficiency. Both teams play very good, but pace-wise, it's not there. You're going to need these teams to shoot, you know, upwards of 50% from the field. Can they do that? Sure. But I think that's a pretty thin margin and kind of why you're ending up uh, going under 146. For sure. And I think a lot of the, the elevated numbers you see to start the year are based on non-conference. Some just overall macro trends you see in college basketball, especially with some of these, these teams that are maybe powerhouses and low conferences that play easy non-conses. Their pace typically slows and their efficiency typically drops once they get into conference play. And we've seen that a little bit, especially with the points these teams have been scoring against the better competition within their own conference. Look at that. I almost knocked over my water because I got so excited about talking about Wyoming on the stream, the fighting Josh Allens, but there you have it. We've got Duke minus five. We've got South Dakota State minus 16 and a half. We've got Wyoming and Colorado State under 146 tonight. Stay tuned for plenty more college hoops. I know Matt, you're already doing all the work day in and day out for all these slates, but you're gonna be seeing a lot more VODs as we gear up for March Madness. So for me, for Matt, for Odd Chopper, good luck tonight. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We always appreciate it, and we will talk to you guys soon.